Recording in progress. Oh, Father, that set us free and gave us salvation. Lord, we want to thank you this morning. Oh, Father, as we go about this day, Father, the one that's incarcerated, the bad that's incarcerated. Oh, gracious Father, we ask that you just unlock them doors, unlock the doors of their hearts, Father, to let them know that, that you love them and that you can keep Um, bless you, God, and that you judge right now. I'm just in the military and trying to keep this country safe. We thank you right now. We thank you for Pastor Thomas. That contain us here on the battlefield, Father, from country to continents. Distributing your word. Oh, Father, this is the next Billy Graham, Father, that is reaching everyone. We thank you right now. And we want to say thank you. And that's why we want to say, it's a good day. I thank God for it. It's a good day. Yes, it is. I thank God for it. I had some parties that thing. A little fat chunk and then the I had some up. I had some down. So smile and build a child. It's a good day. I thank God for it. It's a good day. Yes, it is. I thank God for it. I've been lied on and cheated. Talked about it. It's a good day. Have some up, some down. A few smiling for a whole lot of fun. It's a good day. Good day. I got my health and strength, and, and I know that I'm your child. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for being our father. We thank you for letting us be your children. And Father, we just want to thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you my brother for that prayer and um, we know that the Holy Spirit is here with us and we know that our celebration today is going to impact every life gathered and every life that's going to You need to come on our own, an overcomer in the house, Pastor Overseer Sadi Elliot, to pray specially for us as a mother today. Amen. 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 First, I would like to say good morning and happy Father's Day to every man that's on the Zoom line this morning, all around the world, including Pastor Thomas. And the gentleman that sung, we want to say happy, happy, happy Father's Day and hope you have a blessed day in the Lord today. Even if you didn't birth a child, you may have raised, raised somebody else's child. So you still consider a father today, even a Godfather. So we want to say happy, happy Father's Day. Gracious Father, we come today in the most honest way we know how. We come lifting up the name of Jesus. We come giving you the praise today. We come giving you the glory because it had not been for you on our side. Where would we be this morning? We thank you, Heavenly Father, that the angels encamped around our bedside all night long. And this morning, Heavenly Father, you woke us up, Heavenly Father, 
with new mercy, new grace, new faith, new anointing, dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. God, I come to you to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing and doing in everybody's life on this Zoom. Every family that's represented, dear Heavenly Father, cover them with the blood of Jesus, dear Heavenly Father. Direct their steps, dear Heavenly Father. And that's the fathers throughout the world, dear Heavenly Father. Go forth today like never before. Let them be blessed unmeasurably from their wife and their children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, dear Heavenly Father, if there be in. God, we know you set a special time for for mothers and a special time for fathers. So we thank you for this day. We thank you for Juneteenth that's celebrated here in Texas to hear the Father. Oh God bless every person that will be participating in any programs today and tomorrow to him the Father. Cover them with the blood of Jesus. Any backlash, any shooting, any stabbing, any fighting to hear the Father, any alcohol, any drugs to hear the Father. We send it all back to the pits of hell for whence it comes in the name of Jesus. So, God, we come just to say thank you and tell you how much we love you. Forgive us, dear Heavenly Father, for any sins that have easily beset us, dear Heavenly Father. Cover us with the blood of Jesus from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet, dear Heavenly Father. We give you the praise today. We give you the glory today. We bless the man of God that will bring the preacher. Word. Bless the woman of God that will sing the song today. Bless the man of God that will read the scripture today. And bless the man of God that will even pray today. So God, we're giving you praise today. We're giving the glory today for what you already have done, dear Heavenly Father, in each and every person's life that's on this line. And Lord, bless I'm here. I should have blessed the food that Pastor Thomas have picked up already for all the men, dear Heavenly Father. Two special Father's Day meal for all of them down there, dear Heavenly Father. And we want to say thank you. Thank you for who you are and whose you are. Thank you for being a wheel in the middle of a wheel, covered with the blood of Jesus and with love, dear Heavenly Father. Let that love run from heart to heart and breast to breast. In the blessed name of Jesus, Yahshua, Yahweh, Spirit of truth, amen, amen, and amen. And amen, amen. Thank you so much for that prayer session. We know the Lord that answers prayers, we answer by fire in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 The first Bible reading will be taken by another overcomer, Adi Dolapo. Digitory. Um, good, uh, hello everybody, good morning, good afternoon, good evening from anywhere in the world, and happy Father's Day. Today's Bible passage is taken from the book of Daniel 9, verses 4 to 19. I read, uh, I pray to the Lord God, my, my God, sorry, I pray to the Lord my God and confessed, the Lord, the great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant of love, those who love him and keeps his commandments. We have sinned and done wrong. We have been wicked and have rebelled. We have walked, we have turned away from your commands and law. We have not listened to your servants and the prophets who spoke in your names to our kings, our princes, and our ancestors, and to the people, to all the people of the land. Lord, we are righteous, but this day we are covered with shame. The people of Judea and inhabitants of Jerusalem and all Israel, both near and far, in all the countries where you have scattered us because of your faithfulness to you, because of our unfaithfulness to you. We are we and our kings, our princes and our ancestors are covered with shame, Lord, because we have sinned against you. The Lord our God is merciful and forgiven, even though we have rebelled against him. We have not obeyed the Lord our God. God laws he gave us through his servants, the prophets. Verse 11. All Israel
against us and against our rulers, but bringing on us great disaster. Under the whole heaven, nothing has ever been done like what has been done to Jerusalem. Just as it's written in the law of Moses, all this disaster has come on us, yet we have not got the favor of the Lord our God by turning from our sins and giving our attention to your truth. Verse 14, the Lord did not hesitate to bring to disaster on us, to bring the disaster on us, for, our, for the Lord our God is righteous in everything he does, yet we have not obeyed him. Now, Lord, our God, who brought your people out of Egypt with a mighty hand and who made, your, who made for yourself a name that endures to this day, we have seen that we have done wrong. Lord, in keeping with, your, with all your righteous acts, turn away your anger and your wrath from Jerusalem. The iniquity for an object of scorn and to all around us. Verse 17. Now, our God, hear the praise and petitions of your servants. For your sake, Lord, look with favor on your desolate sanctuary. Give ear, our God, and hear and hear. Open your eyes and see the desolation of the city that bears your name. We do not make request of Bible reading is taken from Second Chronicles chapter 7, verses 11 to 14. It says, O oh, Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house, and all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord, and in his own house he prosperously effected. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer, and have chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. God bless the hearing of his word. Amen. May God hear us from heaven even as we humble ourselves in prayer session throughout the outreach of today in Jesus' mighty name. It's going to be a new beginning for us because God is going to position us for the next generation of the vessels that he wants to use to devastate the camp of the enemy in Jesus' mighty name. When you know you're right, and you are able to apply it judiciously, be sure that it is your deliverance time. Right now, we have issues so diverse in the way the enemy, the devil, has caged us. We might not say it so openly, because most of the time we think about finance, think about physical, we think about mental. It's not just that. Even our, our mind, our freedom, our safety, yes, our health, and divine glory, we're not supposed to remain at the level that we are now. So we need deliverance, but we must be able to approach the one who can deliver everybody by his word and with proper understanding. This I um, want to release us to today as we prepare very well to listen to the Holy Spirit. Don't think you are listening to man or listen to a woman today. You are listening by virtue of the Holy Spirit using the verses that he is going to use to speak to you and I. And I'm happy that we are all gathered together today and we are ready to tune in from wherever we are, even to be blessed of the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. So let me seize this honor and privilege to welcome another overcomer, a resounding one in the house, Mrs. Bosede Ako, to give us a special hymn number. Good 
Hey everyone, and happy Father's Day to all the fathers in the house. A song this day is Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. Why Why on others thou art falling? Do not pass me by. Continue to bless you. Good 
country. One of the words that we had this morning from Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, will forgive their sin and will heal their land. On this note, let me call on the verse that the Almighty God has prepared to deliver the nations, families, individuals, and the world in its entirety. So, I want you to listen with rapt attention and digest every word because everything that will come is a message for you. With gladness in my heart, I'll call on engineer Solomon Agumbiade to deliver the message. Thank you very much. Uh... Pastor Thomas, God bless you. Shall we just the gift of a wonderful season, of a wonderful week? Thank you, Lord, because you are God. We enthrone you in this place. We will proclaim you as our king. This morning, this afternoon, we prepare our hearts. The Holy Spirit, you will reign and speak to each and every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Blessed be your name, O God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let me wish all the fathers in the house a wonderful happy brother's day as i also greet our mommies our sisters in the lord i say good morning good afternoon good evening thank you very much uh, pastor thomas for this wonderful opportunity to share the word of god can we just open our scripture to 2 Samuel chapter 24? 2 Samuel chapter 24, I'm reading from verse 1. I'm actually taking verse 1 alone. We have two scriptures that's going to help us. 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 1. And again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And he moved David against them to say, Go number Israel and Judah. Hmm. Then, First Chronicles chapter 21, verse 1. And Satan stood against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. Who censor Israel and Judah. And then Satan also stood against Israel, woke David to number Israel. Certain things I want to quickly do this morning. I want to talk about this Satan a little bit. Where is the origin of Satan? What is the background of Satan? In Genesis 1, chapter 1, 
The Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. True stuff. And then when you go to verse 31 of Genesis 1, all the creations have been done between Genesis 1 up to, up to 30. And God saw everything that he had made. Behold, it was very good. Very good. Everything God has made was very good. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 16, it tells us that for him all things created that are in heaven, in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And then when you go to Revelation chapter 4, verse 11, Says that thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. Why? Thou hast created all things. By that pleasure, they are our created. I'm trying to trace Genesis Satan. The book of Job, chapter 26, verse 13. See? By his spirit, by God's spirit, he had garnished the heavens. His hand had formed. It's the same person they call Lucifer. Go to Isaiah. So, if God created all things and made them beautiful, there's nothing that God created that was not good. Everything was created perfectly well, and including Satan. But when you go to Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 to 17, we are now told how Satan got his terrible name from. The Bible says that he fell from heaven. Thou falling from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, how art thou called down to the ground, wicked the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend. Not my throne above the stars of God. That was the beginning of the problem of Satan. position before the Lord, the Bible calls him that he was actually the chorister, the chief chorister in heaven. He now wanted to be like God. I want to be like the Most High. And that's how he was thrown down from heaven. And look at what happened here. When you go to verse 15, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell. Pit. See thee shall narrowly look upon thee. And then verse 17, Word, the, the word as a weak as a wilderness and destroy the cities thereof that open not the house of the of his prisoners. Satan was thrown down from heaven. If you remember the book of uh, in, the, in Genesis chapter 11, too, we saw a group of people visiting the Tower of Babel. God did not God did not throw them, God did not scatter them because they wanted to do a mighty thing. But they said, so that we can be like God. They wanted to equate the, to equate themselves with God. And that's the beginning of their problem. And that's why God discomfited them and scattered them. So we can see right away from there. Was thrown from heaven to the head. Look at Revelation chapter 12, verse 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens. <laughs> Go to the inhabitants of the air. For the devil is come down into you. Have one great all because he knew that he's, he has but a short time. What, am, what we are saying is that Satan was thrown down from heaven and there was peace in heaven and the earth was filled with the plague of Satan. And so you can see here Satan was thrown down from heaven. He was beautiful in the beginning, but because of his beauty, 
And because of his pride, because the pride enter his head, God threw him down from heaven. I now inhabited here and started giving us trouble in this place. But thank God for the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the book of Luke chapter 2, verse 11, for unto us is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is called the Christ. And then verse 14, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace. Glory to all men. It was the birth of Jesus Christ that introduced peace to the world. Depending, and then it depends on you. Peace is in the world, but are you embracing the peace? There can be peace, you may not embrace that peace. I want to go back to our, our main passage, chapter 24. I want us to look at it again. And again, see me, and again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against them. What does it mean? Again, what does it mean? What does it mean to be again? in return once more it means that they have been annoying god all, all the time provoking the anger of god all the time and that's why the bible says and again all of us all the children of the bible you know that if you read the story of the children of Israel as they were traversing through the wilderness you will see that they were provoking god all the time and so in this place the bible The of the Lord was kindled again. Now, the question we should ask ourselves: Why was the anger of the Lord kindled against Israel? Please join me. Let us look at Second Samuel chapter twenty-one, verse one. Second Samuel chapter twenty-one, verse one. Then there was a famine in the days of David, three years after year. The fire of the Lord. It is for Saul. The house because he slew the Gibeonites. There was a famine in the land for 17 years. David, sensitive, went to the Lord and asked, why, why was this famine in the land? And the Lord told him, It's because of a, a former leader who created a problem. You remember the story of the Gibeonites? Those are the people who came when the children of Israel were passing through the wilderness. And they went and deceived Joshua. They said they came from a very far country. They didn't come from a far country. They were very next neighbor to them. And then Israel, without consulting with God, went and entered into a league with them. It was then they now knew that they were, very, they were their neighbors. But already they have entered into a covenant that they will not kill them. But So, what is that one telling us? A little sin caused the anger of God to move against his strength. I want us to know that one. A little sin can cause the anger of the Lord to move against his strength. And I want us also to look at Jeroboam. When you go to First Kings chapter 14, verses 7 to 12, I'm going to be reading from verse 9. But Has done evil. The Bible says, but has done evil above all that are above that were before thee. God was talking to Jeroboam. For thou hast gone and made thee other gods and molten images to provoke me to anger, and has cast me behind thy back. Therefore, behold, I will bring evil upon the house of Jeroboam, and will cut off from Jeroboam him that pisseth against the wall, and him that is shut up and let in Israel, and we take away the remnant of the house of Jeroboam, as a man taketh away dung till it be all gone. Him that died of Jeroboam, this be shall the dog eat, and him that died in the sea, in the field shall the fowls of the earth eat. For the Lord hath spoken it. Let's jump to verse fifteen. No, verse fourteen. Moreover, the Lord shall raise him up a king over Israel. Shall cut off the house of Jeroboam that day. Even now, 
For the Lord shall smite Israel. Look at it. It was Jeroboam. Jeroboam who, who sinned. Verse 15. For the Lord shall smite Israel as a reed in the, is shaking in the water. And he shall not, he shall root up of his good land, which he gave to their fathers, and shall scatter them beyond the river, because they have made their groves, provoking the, the Lord to anger. And he shall give Israel up of the sins of Jeroboam. Because of the sins of Jeroboam, God says, I will give Israel up. Because Jeroboam who did sin and who made Israel to sin. So the sin of the leader is one of the things that make God against, against Israel. So you can see that a leader's sin is a living sin. A leader's sin is a living sin and can bring unprecedented consequences to the lead. That's number one we are seeing here. Then two, people also can provoke. Let First Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 to 12. In that place, when Paul was recounting the story of the children of Israel, he said, Moreover, brethren, I will not that ye should be ignorant. How that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the Red Sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat, drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was verse 5. But with many of them, God was not well pleased. He was talking about the, about the citizens and the children of Israel. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. Why? Now these were the things for our example. The Bible says that for, all, for, for we that are living now, for our example to the intent that we should not lose, number one, they should, we should not lost after evil things because of what the children of Israel lost them. Verse 7, neither be ye idolaters, they were idolaters of them as it is written. The people sat down to eat and to drink and to rose and rose up to, to play. Neither let us commit fornication, they committed fornication, as many of them committed, and fell 23,000 people in one day. Neither let us tempt the tempted Christ as some of them committed, as some of them tempted, also tempted, and were destroyed of serpents. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, sorry, I repeated that, and some of them also murmured and were destroyed of destroyer. Let me say that all these things happened unto us, for example, that. A serious problem. I want us to, when God created Noah, God did it in Genesis chapter, verse, chapter six, six to nine. How the flood? Why the flood came? Why did the flood come? The flood came because the children of the children of men. The Bible says that they were so evil. That he repented God, that God wanted to destroy the whole earth. God, that he found people, he found no one found people in the sight of the Lord. And for that reason, he was able to spare just Noah and his household. So the sins of leaders or their or their or, or, the, or their or their people can make God to, to be risen. And that's what happened to Baby, in what we do, in the passage we read, and so much, if there's anything that God hated, is murmuring. So the children of Israel were so intent that they made their leaders to commit errors, to fool. Look at the story of Aaron. Aaron in Exodus chapter twelve, uh, chapter thirty-two. When Moses went to collect the Ten Commandments. Look at what they what they did. 
because Moses delayed the coming. Look at what he said. Exodus chapter 32, I'm going to read verse 1, 35 and 35. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron. And said unto Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we what not what has become of him. In verse 25, and when Moses saw that the people were naked, and they, they made they made a what do you call it, um, calf. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, and made them naked unto their unto their shame among their enemies. And the Lord plagued the people because they made the calf which Aaron made. Number one. Look at what happened in that place. The, the same Moses who led them out of the land of Egypt, they now say, we don't know what has become of this Moses. They did not even pray for him. They did not even pray for him. They have shifted their, they have shifted their attention away from him. They now him. If you look at Exodus chapter 15, when they left Egypt and they came to the water of they came to the water of Mara, the Bible said that they murmured against Moses, murmuring everything, anything that does not go their way, saying, What shall we drink? He cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. When he had cast into the waters, were made sweet. What is important there is that go and read that place, you find out that. The sister of Moses had just died. They didn't care about that. More the, the commissioned with it. They are much more interested in their selfishness, is what was driving them. To, to children, if you follow that commandment, love your neighbor as yourself, which Jesus Christ summarized, and love God above all things. There is no way there will be no peace. If anybody loves his neighbor, you won't convert your neighbor's uh, property. You won't take, you won't you won't commit adultery with your neighbor, you, you, with your neighbor's uh, wife or your husband. You will not commit you, you about all these things are the things that the children of Israel were doing. So much so that. The people angered God, they angered their leader so much so that Moses was, 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 was because of them, Moses fell at the water of Meribah, number, number 20, verses 11 and 12. And Moses lifted up his hand and with his rod, he smote the rock twice, and the water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank and their breasts also. And the Lord spoke unto Moses and Aaron. Because ye believe me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore ye shall not bring this congregation unto the land which I have made, which I have given unto them. Number one, because of their murmuring. When God asked Moses to speak to the rock in anger, Moses himself, I'm sure he must have forgotten. God have told him because the murmuring of the people were so intense. And instead of speaking to the rock, Mojiro, and that was his own doing. I was not able, he was not able to get to the promise now. And this was a man who was always praying for these people. Look at what happened. Look at look at the way the psalmist recorded it in Psalm 106, verses 32 and 33. They angered him also at the mass of strife, so that it went in with Moses for their sake. He with Moses for their sake, because they provoked his spirit so that he spoke. In Nabatesley, it is leaves. Can you see that? In Deuteronomy chapter 1, look at the way, verse 37. Also, the Lord was angry with me for your sake. Thou shalt not go to that. And it's a pity. You know, it's a, it's a pity. When you go to when you go to Deuteronomy chapter 3, verses 23 to 28, look at look at this man who was always pleading the cause of the children of history. When God said, look, let me kill these people, and I will raise from you, Moses, I will raise another nation. I was always pleading that. What is, 
What is other, what of the Indian nation? What will they say about you, oh God? That you are not able to bring these people over to the promised land. That's why you took them to the wilderness. Look at what happened to him here. This is only chapter 3, from verse 23 to 28. And I besought the Lord at that time, saying, God, to show thy servant thy greatness and thy mighty hand. For what God is there in heaven or on earth that can do according to thy works and according to, the, to thy spirit? I pray thee, let me go over and see the good land that is beyond Jordan, Gulli Mountain and Lebanon. We God as I am, verse 26. But the Lord was wrought with me for your sake, and will not hear me. And the Lord said unto me, Let it survive thee. Speak no more unto me of this matter. This was a man who had been interceding for the children of Israel. When they had problem that they threw him to, nobody was interceding for him. These are the prices of a leader, the price that a leader pay. People don't care about leadership. What is the way they want things to happen? And that's the way we behave all over the world. If things are not going our way, we don't care about what the leaders are doing. And, our, and God commanded us to pray for our leaders, for those in authority, especially for those who are also are Christian. In first, in first Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. He said, I exhort you therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. In authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God and Savior. But we don't believe in that. So, what are we talking about? We are talking about people moving their leader to sin. We are talking about people also, or the leaders also that are causing their men, their leader, their followership to sin. For we can provoke God's anger against a whole nation. Now, I want us to look at something. The sins of a part are also the sins of the whole. When you look at Galatians, in fact, let, let's, let's, let me go to Joshua 1, chapter 7. Joshua, uh, Joshua, Joshua chapter 7, chapter 1. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in their costing. A lot of, we know about this. The children of Israel committed trespass in their costing. For Aaron, for Akka, the son of Kami, the son of Sabdi, the son of Zerah, and of the tribe of Judah, took of their accursed thing. Akka took of their accursed thing. Who suffered for it? And the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. So the sin of the whole can be the sin of the, uh, the sin of the, of the part can be a sin of the whole. Just a group of people committed the sin. Look at what happened in, uh, look at what happened in, uh, Look at what happened in, uh, on the on, on Capitol. Look at what happened on Capitol on January 6. Is it not impinging on the on the on America today? Like every other nation. Look at what is happening in Ukraine. The leader who is just obsessed with power. Look at the people that are suffering for it. We are going to go back to David. It is the grand that suffer for it. We are to elevate part. Look at what is happening in my country today. Look at the terrorism that is going on over the world. Look at the terrorists who are fighting the government of the nations. But who are the people suffering for it? Innocent people, when they, when they hijack plane, who are the people dying inside that place? Innocent people. You know, these the citizens that suffer when the you know, when people when, when the leaders are not doing well, it's the people that suffer. When a group of people of a nation are not doing well, the old people suffer for it. We are suffering for the sin of a lot of people today. In, look at, and the Bible says that in the summary that we read, let's go to verses, uh, summary chapter, second summary 24, verses 10 to 17. And David's heart smote him. He had numbered the, the people. He said unto the Lord, I have sinned greatly in that I have, in that I have done. And now, I beseech you.
of all these three things. One of them, that I may do it unto you. One, so God did it and told him, and said unto him, many years of famine come unto thee in thy land, or without flee before thy enemies, why they pursue thee, or that there have been three days pestilence in thy land? What answer I will return to him that sent me? And David said unto God, verse 14, I am in a great strait. Let us fall now into the hand of the Lord, for his mercies are great. And let me not fall into the hand of man. So the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel. Only destroy it. The Lord repented of him of the evil. The angel that destroyed the people. It is enough. Stay now thy hand. And the angel of the Lord was by the threshing floor of Arauna and the, Jebus, the Jebusite. And David spake unto the Lord when he saw the, the angel that smote the people and said, Lo, I have sinned. I have done wickedly. But this sheep, what have they done? And I pray thee, be against me and against thy father and my father's house. So you see that if you compare the David the, We are, we are people to the wine nations and put them on the favorable land. Like Psalm 85, we say, Psalm 85, verse 1 say, Lord, thou has been favorable unto thy land. God has been favorable unto the land. When I consider my nation, Nigeria, has placed us in a very robust environment. Very robust environment, very fruitful environment. But what are we making of it? We are people going all over the world, they are shining all over the world. Go back home. What is happening to us? To us. So you find out that in my nation, everybody is a, everybody wants to be 60 years after independence. Nothing has happened. We're grappling with the leadership problem. In America, yes, the founding fathers of America, America on their knees. with a lot of problems. Like I said, look at what is happening in Ukraine, for God's sake. Because two leaders are fighting, two world powers are fighting. Look at the look at the people that are going all over. Look, look, at, look at children, look at women who have no hand in their decisions. You know, look at what they are suffering because of leadership trouble and because of the sin of the men and women, you and I, we are involved in this matter. It, it, it draws my attention to something. When you go to the book of Ezekiel, when God was talking about the sin of, of the land, in Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 2, he was talking to the, to, uh, to, to the prophet Ezekiel, what, what do you mean? This proverb concerning the land of Israel, saying, the fathers are beating sad grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. That's the, that's the proverb they used to do, say in, uh, in Israel in those days. You got, the Bible says that the soul that shall die. But when what is happening today, the, the message, what I have to ask, I said, what do you people mean by going around the country? That's, I'm reading a message Bible. and repeating the same, the parents, and I want to put leaders here. The leaders are eating the city, they got stomach trouble. That's, I'm reading from uh, Message Bible. And then when you look at common English Bible, that's verse 18. What do you mean by this proverb of yours about the land of history? When parents have grapes, it's so fast. Is it not happening to us today? When our leaders offend, not 
be taken on us. Unfortunately for us, unfortunately for us, the citizens, the leaders of all nations, we have all distanced because of technology and all that. We have distanced ourselves from the living God, the Lord who created all things, the, the creator and the controller of the universe. We don't pay attention to him anymore. And therefore, for that reason, even the passage that we read when you started this morning, sir, the same thing that there, it, was, it was being addressed. to the rest of the world to, do, to positively impact an environment no of the world the collective impact we are supposed to make in the world we are not making it because the world has centered the church the church has centered the world so everything is mixed up we are not different from the rest of the world we have we have now become more religious we carry bible big we carry big bible big, big, we carry big cassock and everything we are more religious instead of being true followers of christ the story of the publican and the Pharisee related by Jesus Christ in Luke chapter 18, when he was talking about the publican and the Pharisee, he said, I'm not like this or no, I'm not like this. So we point accusing fingers instead of living a, a you know, instead of living righteously, but we are living in self in some kind of self-righteous life, always blaming others. We could abolish the law, but have come to perfect the law. And it's formally with his disciple. A new commandment I now give you that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know, verse 35. All men know that ye are my disciple if they have love one for another. Jesus did it, Jesus didn't say, Jesus didn't say that. All men will know that we are his disciple by our doctrine. Emphasis on clearly cause the world to identify us as his disciple or followers is our love for one another. Is that love anywhere? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So what I'm bringing today, the, the person of Jesus Christ give us eternal life. We all know. He said, this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God. And Jesus Christ will have sent. But his principle actually produces godly living and prosperity. But are we living by the principle of the Lord Jesus Christ? You know, because selfishness has so much beheld us that it becomes very difficult for us to even, to even love one another. If, if, the, the experience is all over the place. I have one experience that I asked some people to do something for me in America. They cheated me. I was speaking to my son some few days ago, or about three months ago. Somebody wanted to come and do something in his house. They collected his money. The person ran away in the UK, in, in, the, in, in, in Toronto. Somebody, my daughter wanted to repair her car. They were trying try to deceive her. Nothing was possible in that car. They said, you come and repair it. So you, you find out that. The problem is all over the place. I pray that God will help us in Jesus' name. What am I talking about? We need repentance. The day, the day we have gotten to now, we need repentance. Because everybody is running after money. Everybody is running after money. I'm looking at my time. That's why I'm running. I'm looking at my time. So, the increase, the greed has so much taken us over as a, as a people that we... And, and it's poverty of mind, honestly. When you are carrying more than you need, it's poverty of mind. Somebody said that poverty is not is not decrease in possession, but increase in greed. And we think that uh, uh, that's why they are having problems. So when a leader is also surrounded by wicked people, it's a serious problem. When a leader, a self -right, if a righteous leader is surrounded by wicked people, that is a problem. The real will becomes unjust, very, very unjust. Poor 25 5. They take away the wicked from before the king, and the throne shall be established in life. Righteousness. Sama, we need repentance. The kind of national repentance that Nineveh, the kind of national repentance 
the kind of natural repentance that uh, that happened in, in, in the time of in the time of Jonah. That's the kind of thing we need for now. Let's look at what happened to the, to to David in that second Samuel chapter twenty-four. I'm reading. It went off as the Lord command because of time. And Alana said unto David, Let my God, let my Lord the King take an offer of what seemed good unto him. Behold, he had the oxen for bottle of sacrifice and pressing instrument, and other instruments of, of the oxen for wood. And then the king said unto Arauna, Which does not cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen of his for Shekinah. And the Lord beat, and David beat an altar unto the Lord, and offer both offerings and peace offering. So the Lord was entreated for the land, and the plague was stayed from Israel. So that was very, very important. Like the prodigal son, if we can come to ourselves and return to the Lord, the prodigal son came to himself. And the Bible says he arose and went to his father. And the father had already been waiting for him. God is waiting for us. The Bible says that the Lord's hand is not shutting, that he cannot save his own people. Neither is his hair heavy, that he cannot hear them. But our iniquities have separated us from God, between us and our God. And our sins have hid his way from us, that we will not hear us. But if we can go to God in prayer, God is able to save our land. In the uh, Isaiah 55 verse 7, let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man is taught. Let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. God is always waiting to come and pardon us. Like I said, Nineveh, look at the story of Nineveh in Jonah, Jonah 3, verses 6 to 10. For what came unto the king of Nineveh, rose from his throne, Laid his robe from him and covered him with sackcloth as, as, and sat in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through, through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor peace taste anything. Let them. that is in their land. Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we will perish not? And God saw their works. They turned from their evil way and repented of that he had said that he would do unto them and he did not do it. So if we repent, God is able to take us to return to himself. Job 22, verse 22 to 27. If thou shalt return to the Almighty, Peter, thou, shalt, thou shalt put away iniquity from thy, from thy tabernacle. And what will happen to you? Then that thou laid up ghosts and dust, and the gold of offer as the stones of books. Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him, and he shall answer thee. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and shall be established before you. So God is waiting for us. The children of Israel are always fond of doing that in the wilderness. When you come to Psalm 107, verses 37 to 32, the Bible says they read to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wit's end. Then they cry unto the Lord in trouble. And he bringeth them out of their distresses. He maketh the storm to a calm so that the waves thereof are still. They glad because they be quiet. So he bringeth them into their desire heaven. God is able to bring us to our desire if we are able to go back to him. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible talks, the Bible talks about the people that dwell in darkness. In darkness, I have seen a great light. They that dwell in the shadow of the valley of death, upon them the light has come. Jesus is the light of the world. 
Jesus is the light of that's a, that's a song in our in our, in our dialect. That's why Jesus is the light. Jesus is the way. Let Jesus the way come quickly. Let Jesus guide the way come quickly. He said, the whole world. Nigeria. In final, in, 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 in rounding up, when you look at Isaiah chapter 6, that saw the Lord in the year that King Isaiah died. First, he said, when the angel are crying, holy, 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 he said, the whole head is full of the glory of God. The whole head will be full with the glory of God. But it's, it's another thing for the people to, to have the knowledge of the glory of God. And that's why Abaku was praying. In Abaku 2, chapter 14. He said, God, let, as the water covers the sea, let the whole earth be covered with the knowledge of the glory of Jesus. If the whole earth is covered with the knowledge of the glory of Jesus, then peace will return to our land. Because one thing, Jeremiah finally, Jeremiah chapter 9, verses 23 to 24, the Bible says that, thus said the Lord, The Lord, because all the knowledge of God, glory of man, may the Lord help us and bless us in Jesus. So we need to return to God. If we return to God, peace will reign in our nation. Amen. We, we save ourselves from self destruction, we save ourselves from bad delays, we save ourselves from all the diseases that are taking over the land. I pray, Almighty God. Himself, we help us because he has been the place where we are in, and I know that he is able to save us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for that message. We want to assure each and every one of us that better days are ahead of us, they are coming so so quickly because God is always very faithful in attending to those who are able to humble themselves and who come together to seek him as the Lord and Savior. At this juncture, let me call on another of our comrades, uh, Dr. Lushoga to quickly cross and pray for the verses that God has used that it shall be more anointing in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us. Our Father, our Lord, our God, we thank you again for this message. We thank you because you are a God of mercy and compassion all over the world. In our various nations, we ask that the mercies of God will prevail. Amen. Lord God Almighty, through your mercies and compassion, you, you will deliver us. You will deliver your goodness upon us because you are a God of mercy. And everything that cometh from you, it's good, Lord. Let your goodness locate us, locate the various nations in the mighty name of Jesus. And the spirit of greed, Father, take out of us. Take out of the various nations in the world and let your perfect will, Lord, manifest in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The vessel you've used, Father, we bring him before you, Lord, that Lord God Almighty, the King of glory, that this message will not stand against him in the day of judgment, Amen. but that, Lord, more anointing, more grace, more blessings will envelop him together with his family in the mighty name of Jesus. We say thank you, Father. In Amen. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Please, as we round up, follow me with this prayer. Daniel 9, uh, I just do the prayer of 18 and 19, verses 18 and 19. Oh my God, incline your ear and ear. Open your eyes and see our desolations 
and the city which is called by your name. For we do not present our supplication before you because of our righteous deeds, but because of your great mercies. O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, listen and act. Do not delay for your own sake, my God, for your city and your people are called by your name. God is our friend, is our lover, is our father. Just mighty name, and that our minds will be set free from bondage. We will not continue to live in slavery. Rather, we will enjoy the freedom of God, and by the Holy Spirit, He will guide us in all our ways. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Amen. The world over needs God, and this is the time for God to arise for His name's sake. You will do that, even for a reason of our prayers today in Jesus' name. Let us share the, let, let us close this outreach today because of time and we share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. The presence of the Lord will be your portion as you go out this week. He will guide you in all your ways, and He will lift you up from glory to glory in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. Recording and stopped. And all the time, God is good. The food that we're bringing is blessed, just the last, and the Almighty God will celebrate this special day, even as a day of new beginning for each, for each and every one of us in Jesus' name. And there'll be a turnaround so that we overturn and overturn and overturn. Everything in your life shall be overturned, even to a better glory. In his name, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. So Amen. let somebody follow me to the car so that we can bring you the food. Hello, everybody. God bless us. God be with us. Engineer, the Lord be with you and your family. Thank you, Jesus. Please like and share our videos. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Please like and share our video.
Thank you, Jesus. Please like and share our videos. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.